Today, I'm gonna to talk about some of the highs, the lows, and some of the downright confusing parts of running in 2020. If 2020 had been a regular year, it would have been an absolutely phenomenal time to be a runner. We had so many great releases, so many great products that came out, so many companies bringing their A game and really hitting full stride in 2020. It was amazing to see, but it was an absolutely strange year at the same time, something that none of us have ever seen or experienced before. But it also reminded us that running is more important than ever. And I wanted to take a minute now as one of my last videos of 2020 as we're nearing the end of this very unusual year to spotlight some of the best and some of the worst that I've seen so far. So first let's get to some of like, I think this is probably the least controversial of all the things that I'm talking about today. I'm talking about the best shoe of the year in my opinion for 2020. For me, I've been telling you guys about it all year long. It's the Endorphin Speed. I just love the materials that are in the upper. It's fast, it's comfortable, it's not too puffy. It's something that I can take for workouts. It's something that I've used for virtual racing as well. The Power Run PB plus the nylon plate, I think is a perfect combination. For someone of kind of my skill and strength level, I feel like I'm loading that shoe just the right amount that I'm getting everything out of the shoe and the shoe is getting everything out of me when it comes to running the marathon distance. I've even taken it for a 30 mile virtual race as well. It did fantastic there. I've taken it for shorter distances, speed work, I love it there too. When you want to go fast, you want to feel good. The endorphin speed has been absolutely phenomenal to me. It's treated me well all year long and it's only $160. And for honorable mention in the shoe of the year, I would definitely give that to the Adios Pro. That shoe was an absolute surprise to me. From the way it was released and the way it was described, I just didn't think it was gonna be a shoe that I was gonna like very much at all. I thought it was gonna be more like the Hyperion Elite one, which we'll be talking about later on in this video but it turns out it ended up being one of my favorite shoes of the year, and I just think it's absolutely fantastic. But because the endorphin speed is much more available to a lot of people, and I think is gonna be a much more enjoyable to a much wider range of people, I feel like the endorphin speed still takes number one. And that ties me into the next award that I wanna give out for this year, and that's the brand of the year. I think it again goes to Saucony, and it's not just because of the endorphin speed that I liked so much. If we go back to the beginning of the year, Saucony nailed it, knocked it out of the ballpark with the Blackout series. We had the Triumph 17 in the black with the gray midsole. Then we had the Kinvara 11 with the black and the gray midsole. Then we had the Freedom 3 with the black and the gray midsole. It was a, a really nice little capsule collection that I was really hoping that they would extend all year through with the ride and then even to the Endorphin series. They didn't do that, but the Endorphin series in and of itself was just such a fantastic hit. Well loved by pros, sub elites, non elites like you and me as well. And it's just been a fantastic series that I thought was very well executed. In one year, they gave us two kind of like capsule collections that are very different, but both extremely successful. And I like both of those collections very much. So because of that, Saucony for me gets the brand of the year. Very well done. Next, let's talk about Rookie of the Year. And what I mean by Rookie of the Year is a shoe that's new. It's not a version two or not like the Pegasus. There's been 36 versions before it, before we got to the 37 this year. I'm talking about shoes who are brand new version ones for this year. And for me, that's really easy. That's gonna be the Asics Nova Blast. That FF Blast material kind of came out of nowhere. I totally had like discounted it having seen some early photos and videos of that shoe from the running event the year prior. But the more I ran in, the more I absolutely fell in love with the Asics Nova Blast. And it just became the do it all shoe. You could run fast in it. You can run easy long runs in it. You could do your daily training miles in it. It's just super versatile. Now there's certain things that I hope that they'll be improving upon for next year. I haven't seen what's coming for the Nova Blast 2 yet, but I'm hoping that there are some changes to the upper that are gonna come and not a lot of changes to the midsole because that midsole was just absolutely fantastic but it did such a fantastic job being a version one coming out of pretty much nowhere. 
That's why the Asics Nova Blast gets my Rookie of the Year. Honorable mention for me in this category is gonna go to the Hyperion Tempo. DNA Flash, I just absolutely love that midsole material. The ice blue color that it comes in is just so captivating. I want to eat it for some reason. It's just mesmerizing that foam. And once you get running in it and put some speed into that shoe, it really comes alive and it becomes a very special material to run with. And I absolutely love it as well. That's why it gets honorable mention for Rookie of the Year. Next, let's talk about the most improved brand kind of year over year. I think for me this year, it's gonna be Asics. They came out with so many good version one hits, which I feel like they're finally coming into their stride. They're not that I feel like they have to ditch their legacy products. I think that there's a huge market for those shoes and I'm glad that they still have them, but I feel like um, they're finally not being completely bound to their history and are experimenting with some new types of shoes to appeal to new types of of runners. And so this year we saw the Evo Ride, which was one of my favorite speed shoes of the year, the Nova Blast, which you've already talked about as my rookie of the year. We had the Meta Racer, which was a really fun shoe to run in. I can't run like a marathon in that shoe, but a half marathon or shorter, I'm absolutely gonna be loving racing in that shoe. It's super fun. It looks like a Nonatsuka Tiger that you can actually run in in 2020. So like just really excited about the prospects of where that shoe might go in the future. So many exciting things coming out of ASICS. Jamie definitely did it, made ASICS great again. And that's why I think that ASICS is the most improved brand of the year. Next, let's go from kind of most improved to kind of like needs the most improvement. Let's talk about the worst product launch of the year. And for me, this is easy. It's a no brainer. It's the Hyperion Elite One launch. This this release was a dis, an absolute disaster. I, I, I want to give like Brooks as much credit as I can and say that it has to do with like World Athletics rules. There have been some changes to like the universal availability kind of clause in the rules. And maybe that's why the, the release happened the way it did in this kind of like weird rushed way. But here's what happened. So I went down to Atlanta to go spectate the marathon trials at the end of February. While I'm there, I'm getting emails from Brooks, not m like me personally, I'm getting like the Brooks like blast email saying like, stay up for midnight the night before like the Olympic marathon trials, stay up for midnight and go to the midnight drop of the Hyperion Tempo, a shoe that I love, and the Hyperion Elite One. You'll get a chance to buy either one or both of those shoes at midnight, but you gotta stay up. Which for me, you know, I, I like to go to bed at nine o'clock. So me staying up to midnight is a big deal. So I stay up to midnight, I order the shoes. I'm super excited about both of them. That weekend, I saw a lot of people running around in Hyperion Tempo. So like, I was just super excited because I was seeing the shoe out there. People got some early release uh, inventory of it. Very exciting. And I was very excited to see the Hyperion Elite One on the feet of the Brooks Elite Athletes. But like less than 12 hours after I'd stayed up to get to the midnight launch of the Hyperion Elite One and I paid $250 for that shoe, I'm seeing Des Linden coming down on, on, on like mile one and a half of the marathon trials in a different Hyperion Elite shoe. The, the shoe that would eventually become the Hyperion Elite Two. So they had intentionally built up hype around this version one when they knew that that same day version two was already gonna be on some of their racers feet. So it just seemed really strange and had, and this was before kind of COVID lockdown and everything. So they were saying that within several weeks that Hyperion Elite 2 was gonna be coming out. So basically by the time I got mine, it was already gonna be like pretty much time for the next one to come out. It had already obsoleted itself in 12 hours. So that was super frustrating. Now I could have returned my shoe or canceled my order at that point, but I did wanna check out what this shoe was all about. And here's what I found. First, I remember that initially when this shoe was a kind of first like previewed to the world, Brooks was saying that it would get 25 to 50 miles before the shoe's intended life would end, which is ridiculously short even for a racing shoe. And then I think that they upped it again to like 50 to 100. Either way, like it was always a super short lived shoe to begin with. And then it was also still $250. And then like the fatal flaw of it was it wasn't that good of a shoe. Now I, I, I've talked to literally a couple people who said that they liked the Hyperion Elite One. They are people that happen to be running at an elite slash pro level. So I have to take those near pro level opinions 
at their face value and say like, you just gotta be a pro who's running that kind of speed to be able to enjoy the shoe. I can't get anywhere near there. So I didn't enjoy the shoe. I just thought it was super stiff and very firm to run on. It just felt very hard underfoot. So it was not a great shoe with a ridiculous product launch. They, sh they shouldn't have, they just shouldn't have released it. it it's that simple. Um, because they should have said like, we're releasing the version two, we're not gonna release this version one, we're just gonna call it a prototype. I don't know if that was an, an option available to them, again, going back to the World Athletics rules, in terms of like shoes that had to be on the marketplace so that they could be legal for the marathon trial. So I'm not sure exactly why this shoe came out the way it did, but it was an absolute disaster. Now, honorable mention for the worst product launch of 2020, I think will have to be the Adios Adizero Pro, not the Adios Pro, which was also a really peculiar launch, but the Adizero Pro. So we had started to see like these images of a carbon plated boost type shoe early in 2020. Then towards, I think it was June, maybe July, we finally got the Adizero Adios Pro, not the Adios Pro, but the Adizero Adios Pro. And I got that shoe right away and I thought it was okay. But the same week that that came out, we suddenly also got this new shoe, the Adios Pro, which kind of no one saw coming. I didn't, I had no idea that it was coming out. I only knew that the Adizero Adios Pro was gonna be coming out. And so now we had two carbon plated shoes from Adidas after they hadn't had any, I think ever at that point. And so it was super confusing in terms of the way that product was released. It made very little sense in terms of like, where does it fit in the product lineup? If this Adios Pro is supposed to be like the marathon and half marathon shoe, what is this Adizero Adios Pro, which has carbon butt boost in it? Where does that fit if that's not the marathon racer? So it was super confusing. And on foot, it was, it took me a while to kind of figure out what it's for. And it really, it isn't a race shoe at all. It's more of like your carbon plated trainer or your speed work, your workout shoe. So. That to me was also a very confusing, awkward product launch. So honorable mention in terms of the worst product launch of 2020. Next, kind of sit, sitting in this same category, let's talk about this, uh, the most confusing brand of 2020. And I think for me, that's gonna be Adidas. I mean, we talked about the Adizero Adios Pro, but that's not even the most confusing thing that Adidas did this year. I think the most confusing thing that Adidas did this year had to do with the SL20. A quirky little shoe that was kind of like my sentimental favorite for 2020. It wasn't the best shoe out there, but like, I just, I just love that shoe. It's all light strike. Uh, it looks like a soccer cleat, but it runs like a speed day shoe. I just had so much fun in it. But then like the shoe almost instantly went to deep, deep discount. Then I'm seeing like people are telling me that this SL20 shoe is showing up in places like Marshalls, TJ Maxx, that kind of place for like 80 bucks, 60 bucks, 50 bucks, 30 bucks, like just, just super cheap. There must be just so much inventory of this SL20 that they have to keep deep discounting it or just offloading it to these like, you know, like wholesale, like liquidator type stores. But at the same time, they keep making new versions, new colors, and then those get to full price, but then instantly get deep discounted and the cycle keeps continuing. I can't figure out why they're doing that. Then also this month, they released two or three new colors of a new SL20. They're not calling it an SL20.2. They're not calling it the SL21 for like 2021. They're just still calling it the SL20. It's a not a completely different shoe, but it's a very different shoe than the first SL20, but it's still called the SL20 and it's very different. I haven't tried that one out yet. I'm gonna wait till 2021, just so that I could keep my mind straight on what's going on with the SL20. The other thing that Adidas did that was super confusing had to do with the Boston 9. Now, a big part of that is because, you know, with COVID and everything that happened, the Boston Marathon had to move around quite a bit. But first there was, first there was the Boston 8 with Light Strike. So remember, Light Strike was new for Adidas this year. Then instead of making a new Boston 9 right away, 
they made a Boston 8 with Lightstrike. And again, they didn't like differentiate it on the Adidas website as to whether this was the earlier Boston 8 or the later Boston 8 with Lightstrike. They could have just called it the Boston 8 with Lightstrike, but they didn't do that. It was all in the same product page. You just have to look really carefully at which like color you were selecting to make sure you were getting the newer version. So that was really weird because it was the same Boston 8 just instead of the other like EVA type material that they had along with Boost, it was now Light Strike. Then the Boston 9 came out and it came out with like the anniversary edition, like unicorn colorway, which was just absolutely beautiful. It's the one that I have, absolutely love it. Then once the Boston Marathon got postponed and then ultimately canceled, the Boston 9 just disappeared from the Adidas website for months, gone. Then at some point later in the summer, there's new colors of the Boston 9, a bunch of new colors of the Boston 9, and even the original, the unicorn colorway of the Boston 9, there's more of those suddenly as well. Super confusing for this year. Not really sure what's going on. I think honorable mention for most confusing brand definitely has to go to Nike. They're killing off all these other shoes that were wildly successful, at least in my opinion, in terms of like shoes that I enjoyed, shoes that I've seen a lot of other people enjoying as well. Like we didn't see an Epic React 3, we didn't see an Odyssey React 2, we didn't see any more turbos, which I feel like people were just absolutely loving the turbos, using it in the way that the Nova Blast is being used now. Some people were using it for speed work, some people were using it for the extra long runs, most people were using it for a really cushioned daily trainer, and it was a fan favorite, but the turbo's gone, we didn't see the Vomero 15, although I think that in the UK they're getting it, there's some production issues with that. So that was not, that makes a little bit more sense to me. But a lot of the, the things that I was expecting to see from Nike this year just didn't happen. Instead, we got the Tempo Next Percent, which just didn't make a whole bunch of sense to me either. So there's just so many things that I just didn't really kind of get that why Nike is doing it, um, but you know, I'm sure they know exactly what they're doing. And uh, just because I don't see it doesn't mean they're wrong. I'm sure they're right. But I I just don't see it yet of uh, where the direction is going for Nike running. So that's why they get honorable mention for our most confusing brand of the year. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about is my surprise of 2020. For me, the surprising brand of 2020 was Ultra. This is a brand that I have been kind of curious about, but kind of avoiding. The shoes kind of look weird. They got the foot-shaped toe box. It's a zero drop only brand. Like every shoe they have is zero drop. I think, right? Every shoe they have is zero drop. And so like, it's just a lot of like quirky things that I'm not sure that I was really gonna like. I like shoes that are like usually in the eight to 10 millimeter drop kind of category. So I really didn't think I was like gonna like it. I saw a discounted pair of Ultra Escalante 2.0. They're on 2.5 now, but I went with the 2.0. Absolutely loved that shoe. Loved every minute that I was running in that shoe. It was such a delight to run in. I liked it so much. I thought I'd try another one and tried the Ultra Superior 4.5. Also loved that shoe as well for the type of terrain and running that I'm doing around here. It's just absolutely perfect. I tried the Ultra Torn 4.5 plush. I'm still waiting on putting out a review on that one. I'm not so sure I love that, but overall for what Ultra has provided this year, I'm pleasantly surprised from what they're bringing. So I'm gonna say that they're my most pleasant surprise of 2020. So those are my best and worst and most confusing things that I've seen in 2020. Let me know in the comments what you guys think for some of those categories. I'd love to hear about it there. Better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream I do just about every day on YouTube, 3 p.m. Central Time on this channel. I'd love to keep the conversation going. That's all I have for today, everybody. Hope you guys had a fantastic time running in 2020 or to the extent that you could, that you made the best of it. Hopefully you're staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?